Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. If there is an encouraging way most people achieve fulfilment in life, it is by doing what they love regardless of the outcome. This is a unique way to describe the enduring contribution of Marie Windsor, the multi-talented artist and Hollywood B movie queen, notable for her criminal-minded roles. So sad she did not hit it big, something she desperately desired that she did not hesitate to alter her look. But how Marie Windsor destroyed her career with plastic surgeries. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Marie Windsor's convincing on-screen display of pale eyes, cynical voice and blazing attraction that is unpredictably dangerous may have won her a place among B-movie lovers. Her kind of eyes could stare affectionately but are risky to toil with. At least that's what she made her fans believe, while in reality she's just a symbol of modesty. Essential nature is what movie producers exploited in her characterization in those classic productions like the noir features Force of Evil and The Narrow Margin, which today represent some of her best career achievements. Of course, Windsor was multi-talented and ready for greatness, but one thing stood in her way, her 5 foot 9 inch height. The same thing that made her unique somehow was said to have created problems for her in scenes with average height co-actors. Windsor is among those few gifted actresses who built a lengthy career by being a shining light on the average. This obvious limitation didn't affect her resolute nature or her personal life, hence was described by a critic as a sensible woman with an enviable marriage plus a healthy attitude that made her persona a model. After several years of fruitful performances in movies, stage, radio and television, Windsor politely allays the fears of her fans who want to know if she has any career regrets. How could I be bitter when I've loved every bit of what I've been doing in films, she says. There's no question about her enormous contribution to Hollywood B-movies. Whether she was portraying a mobster's insider or a cowboy's sweetie, Windsor was plausible in each of those her bad girl roles. Though her name might not be as loud as other celebrated movie icons, she is sure an inspirational talent of her era. This dance hall girl of the westerns retired comfortably to her Beverly Hills home with her husband, Jack Hupp, and a precious pet dog, Tizzy. Her creativity did not retire with her as fans were baffled by the residue of her creativity still showing. Recall that Windsor was said to have turned her talent into painting and sculpturing after an enduring time in the entertainment scene, and had lived as a veteran with more than 70 movies to her credit, plus several TV shows like the famous Simon and Simon, Fantasy Island and Tales from the Dark Side. A school of thought believes that Windsor not winning certain prestigious medals may not be for her lack of talent, because we saw her declared the winner of the Look Magazine Award for Best Supporting Actress in 1952 for her outing in The Narrow Margin, it unfortunately became the first year the award was not celebrated in its usual flamboyant Hollywood-style party for the recipient. Perhaps an atom of jinx, one would say. Marie Windsor was such an industrious artist whose diverse talent surprised a lot of people, including Jack Benny, who unknowingly featured her gag jokes in his 1942 comedy production, George Washington Slept Here, and was baffled when he found out. At the time, she was sending jokes to Benny under the pen name M.E. Windsor. Benny, who did not just love the jokes, was said to have been stunned to learn that Windsor was the one writing them. Perhaps in admiration of her untapped talent, he was said to have arranged her first contract with Warner Brothers. At a point in her career, she was barely making a good living from her creativity. Survival, as a writer puts it, was more than a word to her, and like most triumphant individuals, she had spoken about her times of living from hand to mouth, even as she put her best in the movies. The truth was that she was not earning great salaries at the time, as she reminisced of her constant concerns about house rent and car expenses. Her condition then was made worse by a lack of self-confidence. 
She improved gradually because she never had the kind of opportunity that most Hollywood actresses had at the early stage of their career, an opportunity that came later, especially with the help of Stella Adler, who she described as marvellous for the training she received from her. Although Windsor's inferiority issue, according to her, was more on her great figure because she never regarded herself as good-looking, she has always felt that her forehead was too high, but something Bangs could correct. She also felt her nose was too prominent, and so had gone for plastic surgery in 1959 to have it corrected. The result thereafter was not as spectacular as she had thought. I've often questioned my decision to have my nose reshaped. She had lamented because she thought perhaps she'd be offered more kind-hearted roles in films, since the former did not match the creation. What a dilemma for this enviable lady. It was obvious that she wanted to move away from those criminal roles that film producers think she was most valuable in. Who knows if she would have done better if they had given her a rare opportunity to display her natural humility in the movies. Still, on the outcome of the facial surgery, Windsor hinted that instead she was getting even more of the bad girl's role, and many people, including her husband, preferred the modification. No one would blame her because Hollywood at the time was about appearance. She needed a fashionable screen persona to meet expectations. Even though her nature given nose contour isn't bad, it's just that I wish I'd been more secure and had accepted myself as I was, she had stated. Emily Marie Bertelson, widely known as Marie Windsor, was born in 1919 in Utah. After graduating from Marysville High School, she joined Brigham Young University, where she became active in dramatic productions. But before this time, Marie Windsor was described as an exceptional fellow in high school because she was good at spelling, English and art. Even while the school had no art teacher, she positively impressed her principal to the extent that she earned two books on art from the administrator, who also challenged her to up her skill in drawing and painting to get scholastic recognition for her work. Thanks to her height, that did not just make her the tallest girl among her classmates, but allowed her to captain the school basketball team. She was very expressive as a young lady, probably looking for fame from all areas of life, including sports, hence was said to have been described by a 1939 news article as an accomplished athlete, an expert dancer, swimmer, horsewoman, and one who plays golf, tennis, and skis. Years later, Windsor's nostalgia for her childhood as an 11 years old girl was great as her parents were credited for a usual long journey to Richfield, Utah, where she took weekly dancing come dramatic lessons. Her thinking was that her parents made her feel the entertainment career was good, not forgetting, of course, her grandmother, whom she referred to as Gunga, an ex-postmistress at Marysville, all of whom were sources of inspiration for her acting career. After participating as a contestant for the Queen of Covered Wagon Days in Utah, she was said to have been informally recognised as Miss Utah of 1939 by Utah's Chamber of Commerce. How did that happen? According to Windsor, becoming a beauty queen the way she did was kind of peculiar, but in her words, I've got to strike that out somehow. At the time, because of the Mormons, there was nothing like the Miss Utah contest. They had instead Miss Covered Wagon, a man she identified as Gus Barkman, who was the head of Utah's Chamber of Commerce, had told her of an opportunity that somebody needed a Miss Utah for some kind of a festivity, with Mr. Barkman saying, You're the nearest thing we've got, so go and represent us. That was how she became Miss Utah. Windsor bravely served as a fashion model, a bit player in movies, and acted in stage plays at Brigham Young University and in Salt Lake City, local radio, before she was encouraged to give Hollywood a try in 1940. She decided to focus on film acting when she humbled herself under the tutorage of the famous Maria Auspenskaya. Soon she recognises her inadequacies, the exceptional tallness that is rare for a celebrity of her era. It became her greatest undoing, even as it was reported that she had to increasingly do a knee bend while walking, in a particular scene with John Garfield in Force of Evil. Her momentary joy working with Forrest Tucker as co-star male lead in Hellfire was too little to take care of her natural hurdle, as finding such matching actors was always an issue. 
Unfortunately, her early film successes remained the most unforgettable roles in her career, despite several years of intense exploitation. In an epic opinion on why her career stagnated, Windsor talked about the likes of Marilyn Maxwell, Virginia Grey, Angela Green and Anne Doran, as some of the great and talented actresses who were like her in the industry, people that never made it big in the industry, which she said was because they never had important industry men in their lives that could have pushed their careers forward. Even though she was not speaking for any of those names, she assumed they all had something in common. In her view, many of the adjudged successful actresses had such men in their life who loved them, hence was able to hit the front pages most of the time and made it big at certain levels. People sometimes ask if I'm not bitter because I didn't go further in my career, she had said, but had added that she usually tells them that she can't truthfully say no, but that she had always wondered how could I be bitter when I've loved every bit of what I've been doing in films. For Windsor, happiness in life is about having warm and affectionate parents, which she can boast of. It's also about healthy life, which she believes is a gift from God, and peace of mind regarding family life and friendship. She also mentioned good diets and a convenient living that is free of monetary issues, as those things she can be proud of as her source of happiness, because I've got it all, she says, except satisfaction in my work, but that's only because I don't work enough. It was obvious that she became so annoyed with the femme fatale and dragon lady kind of stereotype roles being offered to her, I was and I got tired of it, she declared, adding that her decision to modify her nose because of that was also a terrible mistake. Windsor did not exonerate the film director who insinuated that her nose may have been responsible for her jinx. You have to turn this way because of the shadow of your nose we're trying to avoid she said, quoting the director. She said that the insult motivated her to do it, but after the surgery she wished he'd never said that to her. Regardless of what you have seen her do in the movies, this lovely lady was able to live a humble lifestyle, happily married to her beloved husband, Realtor Jack Hupp, to whom she remained faithful till death. But before then, Windsor was briefly wedded to band leader Ted Steele in 1946, but the union was annulled the same year according to a news publication. Then she met and married Hupp, a decent young man who represented the US in the 1936 Olympic basketball team. Their union produced her only son, but more significant is how these two lovers met and immediately fell for each other. It was actor Billy Bakewell and his wife who encouraged Windsor to agree to a blind date with Hupp. The four had met in Beverly Hills. Whether love at first sight or just emotional uniformity, Marie was said to have liked Hupp at once. On what transpired, she says, I fell for him that very night. We played tennis the next day. Just a day later, neither of us went with anyone else. Narrating his version of the arranged meeting with Windsor, Hupp noted that when he first met her, he saw a very beautiful little girl that is king size. Billy asked if she liked me. I like him, was her response as she came forward to kiss him on the side of his face. He added that Windsor was so natural and pleasant to be with, and did not show any sign of coy. The two were married on the 30th of November 1954, and had remained together, but not without disagreement, only that they had a way of making their bed straight when the need arises. Hupp, who lost his first union that produced a child, had fears that she might do the same to him, as he once spoke about how they were able to adjust in the marriage. I was gun-shy and afraid that it might happen again, he says, but a day came Windsor told him, every time we argue, you get up tight. Look, I love you, you love me, we're going to stay married, doesn't mean I'll agree with every idea. And that was it. He got the message right as both worked together to build their home. When Windsor had her son Richard, she says motherhood wasn't hard for her to amend to, because she had been preparing for it all through the eight years they had been married before her delivery. But like most infants, Ricky, she said, will wake you up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning, an aspect that did exhaust her, but thanks to her stepchild, who she said, helped in raising Rick. She did not have too many scheduling issues at the time, because most of her starring roles were with programme pictures, which she said had a brief duration, even the supporting roles. When I was on the TV serial Full Circle, 
I worked at least three days every week, she hinted, and it was never an issue. Marie Windsor's demise occurred on 10th of December 2000 of congestive heart failure, an incident that happened just a day before her 81st birthday. After battling and surviving several illnesses and undergoing treatments, at different locations. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Some actresses never have the kind of opportunity others leave the profession at the peak of their careers. Why Alice Fay walked away from the biggest stardom. Watch this video.